Okay, so here we have a water dog that's been groomed by a pet groomer. And this is what I would consider a doodle head. So they leave a lot of extra hair on the ears on both the underside and the outer side. Um, they do not take it close to the leather. Um, his leather is way back here. Um, they also leave a lot of hair on the face, but they take the sides of the head um, shorter. So the water dog is supposed to have a nice broad top skull. And by doing the groom like this, you lose the width of the head, um, the disproportionate um, nature of the ears and the face. Um, you lose the width of the head. He doesn't have a bad head. Um, it's actually nice and broad. It fills the entire uh, palm of my head, hand. Um, but looking at him like this, um, it does not appear to be that way. Um, so, um, what the first thing I'm going to do is, um, clip the underside of his ears, um, get rid of the bulk of that hair, um, and then, um, trim around the leather. Um, I don't like a lot of hair on water dog's ears. They don't need them. They're not a poodle. They're not a doodle. So they don't need it. So I have a 30 blade on my Andis clippers and I'm just going to go to the outside of the ear. You can see how much hair they, they left. What that's gonna do is it's gonna allow the ear to sit a little closer to his head. There's a lot of folds in the ear, so you just wanna be careful not to catch any of those. Always work to the outside of the ear, never come back into it. You do that on both sides. Some water dogs have hairier ears than others. Um, I don't like to completely pluck the ears. Um, if they have super hairy ears in the ear canal, I'll pluck some, but I never pluck all of it. Um, I find that it irritates them more than it helps them. So already you can see that it brings the ears closer to the head. Next, I'm going to use my scissors and use my fingers as a guide to find the edge of the ear so that I don't actually cut the leather of the ear. And I take that hair, I brush it to the outside of the ear and get rid of all those stragglers. And then I do the same on the other side of the ear. I flip the ear up so I can see where the leather is and I go right around that side. And again, I brush it to one side, make sure that I get all those long pieces that we don't want. Already you can see how much wider his head is looking. And you repeat on the other side. down with this is straggly bits and then go to the inside part of the ear. Now this is for a pet trim. I do it a little bit different for a show trim. I'm just go over that bit of the ear again. And we'll blend the tops of the ears into the head as we um, 
do that trim. The next thing I like to do is uh, whatever blade I'm using on the body. Um, and for him, I'm using a five blade today. I like to come up against the grain, under the chin, all the way to the front of the lip. I don't like my dogs bringing me their bowl full of water on their face. So the less hair on the face in my book, the better. So I just clean up under the chin, get rid of all that extra hair. And that's shortening the length of his face. I use that same length going down his muzzle, go down one side. And then I go down the other side. Go right with the grain. I will go under the ear with it. It'll make trimming and blending everything a little easier and a little faster. I don't go above the eye line when I do that. So I stay right where his eye is. I'll do the same thing on this side. Then to blend everything, I pull the bangs forward. I come in at an angle and clip out his visor. I'll trim the bridge of his nose to open up his eyes. I watch where the corners of his eyes are so I can get in there nice and deep because we know they get eye boogers, okay? Then all this stuff that's still left there from the clippers, I'll use my scissors and just blend it. Into the face. Obviously we have hair along the lip line. So let's lose that. And we brush it every which way until it's nice and tidy. So it leaves you with a little bit of hair on the face so they're not the face isn't completely shaved down. But it does allow them to not bring their water bowl to you. I like to pull back the lip and all this stuff here that gets kind of crusty in the corner of the lip here, I trim out. That's where a lot of bacteria stop. A lot of the smell, that's where that will hang out in that little crevice right there. Take my thinning shears and just soften it a little so it's not so sharp. Okay. 
and then we'll do the same for this side. I am using my curved shears right now, um, but you can use um, straight shears um, as well. I just prefer my curves. So clean out all that junk so they don't get smelly. Lots of combing, making sure that you're not leaving any pieces behind. Make sure nothing's getting stuck or missed. So then again, I just use my thinners just to soften it. Get rid of some of the harsh lines. lots of blending take your time practice makes perfect So I just keep combing, making sure we're not missing anything. Now the top of the head, unhook him. He won't go anywhere for me. So what I do is he actually had far less hair on the top of his head than the rest of his head. So his top isn't going to need a ton of trimming. So I pull the, I hold onto the face and I pull the ear towards the nose so that we can get this back part here. And that also fluffing the top of the ear. You can see all the pieces uh, sticking out there that we want to get rid of. So we just round right up into the back of the neck, into the top of his head. We go a little bit shorter on the sides, but not stop too much. Stop. Don't be afraid to tell him to cut it out. They don't need to be mean. They also don't need to walk all over you on the grooming table. Nothing wrong with telling them no. So keep fluffing the head. And he doesn't have too much hair on the top of his head, so we're just gonna Blend it in. To his neck. He is a wavy, but he has a lot of body and a lot of texture to his coat. So it does stick up a little bit more than some wavies. Um, if you have a much straighter wavy, um, your thinning shears will be a little bit easier because it'll take off a little bit less hair at a time and allow you to have a little bit more flexibility with the what you're doing. And again, I come and I take this ear to his nose. I'll push his head back so it's up over his neck. And again, I blend his ears and sides of his face into the top of his head.
having more hair does not necessarily make everything look bigger, depending on where you leave it. Depending on where you leave it, it can make a head look smaller. Again, come forward. I'll comb backwards. See if there's anything sticking over the back side of his head. I'll comb it to one side. you to see what you're missing what you're if you need to remove anything and help them back up use my pen brush kind of floof and brush and that is a much better head Ears are closer to the body. You actually can see how broad his head truly is, and that he actually has a pretty decent face on him. So, no longer a doodle, now a water dog. <laughs>